Okay, good afternoon. Hope you're all suitably refreshed and back from lunch. Uh, my name is Steve Holt, North Wales Fire and Rescue Service. I'm part of the Professional Service Standards Department and I'm here today following our um, visit by the HSE in October to tell you about our Professional Service Standards Department and our operational assurance of workplace audits. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about the structure of the team, then I'll tell you how we select our workplace to be audited through a number of criteria. I'll then explain to you how what's involved in the audit and the, and the six areas that we, we um, audit during the workplace audit. Then I'll tell you the, uh, the findings from that audit, how we feed it back into our organisational learning and national language learning following that the audit process. So a little bit about the team. So the background, the primary focus of our Professional Service Standards Department, PSS, is to ensure that North Wales Fire and Rescue Service provides the highest possible standard of service delivery to our communities. To do this, it brings together a number of assurance and investigation work streams into one function, independent of our mainstream service delivery. Our base is an office, it's a centrally located office in Conway, and we don't share that with any other function in the service, we're standalone. Okay, some of the key areas of our work, first one being operational response, five of the seven operational members of the team are FDS managers. These being four station manager Bs, one group manager B, and our senior PSS manager is an area manager allocated to the street rotor. PSS team members are spread across the four rotor groups, ensuring that 365 days a year there's one member of the team always available for on call. Management and health and safety. With the services health and safety and policy development manager city within the team, the responsibility lies with the team of ensuring that the service meets its legislative responsibilities, the implementation, monitor and review of policies and procedures along with the proactive enhancement of health and safety and wellbeing within the service. Safety investigations. PSS team has a responsibility for the investigative every safety event which occurs in North Wales Fire and Rescue Service. These events are recorded initially via a control room who then telephone one of the PSS team members on duty and allocate the safety event to them. Each PSS team member is qualified to IS or need watch qualification within the department. Just to give you an idea of the amounts of safety events we, we deal with, including near misses, it's a roundabout. We encourage actively that the name is reported so we can do some learning out of that and prevent it happening again. Okay? We're looking around about 60 to 70 safety investigations a month, including near misses. We proactive, proactively seek our staff to report near misses. IC assessments. Members of the PSS team take an active role at every operational assessment process is run with the North Wales Fire and Rescue Service. This includes promotion processes and Instagram assessments with supervisory managers. This also includes our scenario facilitated training at uh, Training Development Centre, the XRA simulated incident. What we try and have is every IC assessment undertaken is one of the teams on there for the Instagram assessments. Operational assurance. One member of the team, namely myself, is responsible for monitoring and coordinating the operational assurance returns received from across the service for instant command activities and operational command assessments. We feed back into the, uh, we currently use PDR Pro, uh, we run PDR Pro 5 at the moment, and every assessment that's undertaken, we get it fed back into there so we can report back any of our findings, any areas of concern, any safety critical areas that we need to discuss. Discipline investigations. This is an area of focus that we share with our HR colleagues. One of the PSS team is allocated an investigation, which will then follow through from its inception to any potential discipline hearing. It is our responsibility to provide factual information in order for the principal officer to ultimately decide on the outcome of any discipline investigation carried out within the service. Each team member within the PSS is qualified to investigate practice level seven and able to carry out that role investigations. Appreciations and complaints. All appreciations are sent via the service and it comes to be sent through the PSS department for recording. For example, we encourage stations to provide thank you letters, thank you cards, thank you notifications, so that we have the opportunity to reply back to the individual who took the time to send the appreciation by a letter for the Chief Fire Officer. 
So if somebody takes the time out to send us a letter appreciation, we ensure that we reply back to the individual and also we, we inform the department individual of the appreciation and see the appreciation. Complaints. Complaints to a member of the public under the PSS department as responsibility over. These are fed into our team either via the control room or via the corporate comms department. The team works mainly to the guidelines set on our service policy and procedures for complaints. Consolidate support and consistent policy development. PSS chair the policy and procedure quality assurance group that scrutinises all new policies against the integrated impact assessment that covers quality and diversity, health and safety, the Welsh language policy and also finance and data governments. Security. Work streams in the PSS are ideally suited to being able to collate information from across the service in relation to security risks. From information being fed into the department via the NEMIS system and the Rex Investigation System, we can feed information into such areas as a security review group, which meets every quarter, educates staff about existing current security issues affecting the service internally and also nationally. Our primary focus within the PSS department is our workplace audits. North Wales Fire and Rescue Service recognises that operational incidents present the highest risk environment encountered by its staff. Therefore, our initial focus of our workplace audit has been our fire stations and operational staff. Workplace audits provide an assurance that the health and safety and well-being of our staff is being maintained and it also helps to identify good practice that could further enhance the health and safety and well-being of our staff. The first no-notice workplace audit, and I'll come on to it a little bit why we do no-notice no audits, was, was implemented in November 2015. Since then, the PSS department has audited every fire station, every watch, and every department within the service. During the audits, the PSS team members provide coaching and support and guidance to managers and crews so to, as to enhance the health and safety well-being and delivery of the communities we serve. So talk a little bit now about how we select the workplace for the audit process. Okay, there's a number of triggers that, that we look at prior to deciding which workplace we're going to audit, and that can be from a fire station up to headquarters. There's nobody that hasn't been audited in North Wales Fire Rescue Service at this moment in time. Okay, we look at some of the operational assurance findings, some of the feedback from operational returns we look at and we can identify areas of concern that maybe have happened on incidents. We will then drill down into that and look at potentially going to that supervision manager or that station and ordering the station to ensure in that we've got things in place to support them or why this happened in a certain instance. Safety events. As I said, we do a lot of safety events and our risk-based process is to look at why a station is having safety events, what type of safety events are they having and get down into what's actually happening in the station to get these safety events out. Another area that we, we concentrate on is if a watch or the station has had a change of management. We allow them a period of time to bed in because they new watch managers on that station and then we'll go along within a couple of months to ensure that what they're doing is actually correct and that what they're teaching is correct and what they're putting into place and management is correct. So we won't go straight away as soon as we straight up on day one, we'll give them a couple of months to bed in and we'll also provide that coaching and mentoring if things are not quite correct during that period of time. If a station or a watch has had a number of new starters, that then gets them up the risk register so that we can go there. If we've got a number of new starters or apprentices on stations, Yet again, we give a period of time to, to settle in and go along to ensure a bit of ops assurance is undertaken. Reference what's what's being taught in training school is actually being taught on, on the stations also. Um, complaints on stations. Yeah, if we have a number of complaints about um, potentially sort of fire firefighter behaviour or complaints about station performance, that'll be another trigger that will uh, get the station up to the risk register. And our time frame is that we try. Or our aim is to get to every workplace and every station, every watch, at least by annually. Sometimes we do have a little bit of slippage on that due to work, however, our aim is to get there by annually. At this moment in time, we are ahead of schedule this year to complete that. So, once we've decided where we're going to audit, okay, we carry out when the date for the workplace audit has been agreed upon by the team, 
It is updated into our department planner, an Excel document for the planning, monitoring departmental activities. The day before attending, attending the workplace audit, a pre-audit work is undertaken by one of the team. This piece of work consists predominantly of a background investigation directly relating to the workplace that we will be auditing. We will produce a short document containing information identifying the managers and the crew on duty, any pre planned activities noted in the calendar for that station or workplace. It's no good to turn up to a workplace if they've got another activity taking place. It's a waste of resources. So we monitor the, the calendars actively up until 24 hours prior to going to that workplace. Uh, we look at things like ops assurance of the managers, and I'll discuss after how we, how we choose a manager to be ops assuranced. Okay? And so it comes down to the, the timing and the, the last time since an operational assurance. We will take with us to an audit, an operational station folder, and in that folder is containing some of the documents up there, as you can see. Okay? It's a blank workplace audit form, <coughs> two blank copies of a standard drill assessment, two blank copies of an instant command assessment, and the previous audit's action plan so we can look at uh, have they been addressed, have everything been identified been resolved. So it's closing the loop from the first audit to the second audit. So during the audit, the team follows a pre-planned schematic approach to each workplace audit. Departmental audits follow a similar pattern to the one which we now explained, with the operational elements removed and some of the information captured identified specifically dependent on the department to be audited. Whenever an audit is, un is undertaken, the team wear undress uniform, okay, like I'm dressed in today. Because normally in North Wales Finance Group we wear corporate wear with no rank marking, so it adds a bit of formality to the, to the audit process. The whole active audit process is designed to be undertaken in four hours and it consists of six focus areas. The majority of the areas are one to four completed during the first hour of the team's arrival at the audit location. If we're going to audit a retained duty system station that starts to drill at six o'clock, we turn up at five o'clock an hour before they come on duty so we get the majority of the work done prior to coming so we can concentrate on the, the practical elements of the audit when they turn up for duty. The first area is health and safety. Here a member of the team We'll take a walk around the workplace ensuring, for example, the health and safety law poster is correctly displayed, the location of the first aid box and its contents are current inventory and in date, and the welfare facilities are clean and good condition and that no personal possessions are left unattended or out on the show and present a security risk to a service. The second is the operational preparedness response. The team would use this area to thoroughly check each appliance or vehicle assigned to that station. A check of the vehicle logbook, a check of the driver's logbook, and that all equipment is safely stowed and that equipment is stowed in a clean, tidy and as per the inventory. Thirdly, operational preparedness and response. Personal management is looked at. Some areas of the focus in this section are located to PPE logbooks to monitor their completion. And we also physically check the, P the individual's PPE, fire kit, and their work where during the pre-audit process. The fourth area of management is the management administration. Here time we spent checking the details, including the building and appliance inventories, the daily task planning for the workplace by the supervisor manager in place, and the current urgent safety notices and procedure alerts produced by the service are displayed and that the required multi-management returns are sent to the relative departments. So that's predominantly the first four areas of the workplace audit. I'll move on to the, the, uh, the, the last two areas now, which is the practicalities of the audit. Once the crew of the, of the workplace has been audited to arrive, we as a team, we monitor the parade, ensuring that things are in place for the parade, they've got some structure to the evening, and the pre-planned activities are undertaken. Okay. During that period of time, one of the PSS team will ask relative questions to